Easy people, welcome back to my channel at Big Steve MCFC. First game of the season is out of the way. Manchester City get the three points. Burnley nil, Manchester City three. And we're off to a flying start, Blues. Um, yeah, you know, on paper, Burnley away first game of the season. Um, we're just coming off the back of the charity shield where we didn't look too good. Um, there was rumours going around the camp of injuries, Ruben Diaz, etc., John Stones, um, Burnley Friday night, Vincent Company. It was set up for a fairy tale for Burnley, to be honest. But we turned up, we were efficient. Remember, the word of the season from me is efficient. We were efficient and we got the job done. The starting lineup came out a uh, bit unusual. Rico Lewis on the uh, on the left hand side. Walker on the right, Akanji and um, Ake in the middle, Rodri De Bruyne, Alvarez, Bernardo, Foden, Haaland. So on paper, it was a great side. Um, I was doing some work match day for Manchester City on the pitch. So we, we got to see the lineup early and we were talking about it. Um, with John Stones and Ruben, Ruben Diaz missing, it's a massive part of our defence and our, you know, system with stones going into the middle and things like that. So it was interesting to see how we would cope. Um, but Burnley surprised me. They played football. They didn't try and um, go long or just try and mess it up. I think the last few years with, 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 with Sean Dyche, Ashley Barnes, Chris Wood, players like that, Vegas, they've been going long and, 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 and that was sort of their DNA. Um, I think Vincent Company's changed that. I think um, working at pitch side and watching how they were, uh, Craig Bellamy had them warming up. The pitch was a, a beautiful pitch. Usually you go there, the grass is a bit long, it's a bit dry. Um, but I think Vincent, credit to him, he's got him trying to play football. Um, and we got off to a flyer. Three, four minutes in, you know, ball across, across the pitch. Rodri heads it back into the middle. Um, there's Erling Haaland to stab it all. First touch, first shot on target, goal. You couldn't ask for more than that, you know what I mean? And Haaland starts the season as he left off. You know, um, last season in the Community Shield, he dropped a stinker. He missed some chances and people were laughing. Um, this Community Shield against Arsenal, you know, we lost the game. He came off early, he walked off, he gave the crowd that little smile and the wink and the free and all that. But listen, this boy, when, when the business starts, when the season starts, he's on it. And um, his movement and, and everything, you know, we don't have to touch the ball um, a lot of times. Don't have to come deep and get into play and start, you know, getting in each other's way in the middle because he wants a touch. He's just got to do what he does. When the ball is in and around that box, make sure you're on the end of it. And like you say, one touch, one goal. Um so we were 1-0 up. Uh, Burnley tried to huff and puff. They got in behind us a couple of times, a couple of efforts and dragged across goal. Um, I thought City in the middle at times did get a little bit sloppy. Um, I thought the Kevin De Bruyne injury is a massive blow. Obviously, Kevin didn't have much of a pre-season. Um, he was, while the others were training, he was doing light work. While they were playing these friendlies in Japan and stuff, he was he was on the exercise bike at the side of the pitch. I was very surprised that he started the game. I know he came on in the, in the Community Shield and he looked well, but I just thought maybe another couple of weeks of training under his belt um, to get him ready for the season. But look, that's me in hindsight. And, and he's pulled up again with a hamstring. It doesn't look good. You could see by the way he walked past the away end, he was fuming. You know what I mean? He was disappointing. Um, but he's a massive blow. I mean, we're linked with Paqueta. You know what I mean? I sold my car to Lucas Paqueta. I sold my car to Lucas Paqueta. We need it. We need it. We're linked with him. Very creative player. I think he's very, very uh, wasted at West Ham. I think in our system, he'll flourish. So hopefully this week we can get the Paqueta deal over the line. Um but we changed the midfield. Kovacic came on, in my opinion, did really, really well. He was getting the ball deep and driving with it. 
I think he's just going to be one of these players that just, you know, he's found his his team now. I think he's got a new lease of life. He's enjoying life in Manchester, and and he and, he, and you can see it on the pitch. Um, then Bernardo Silva, you know, I was speaking. I thought Bernardo Silva played really well. People said, oh, he gave the ball away a couple of times. He might, he might have done, but he was popping up at left back. He was popping up at right back. He was popping up at DM, centre back. He was all over the pitch. And what he brings you is energy. And what he does is he keep instead of it being slow build up, when you've got Bernardo Silva running between the lines and linking the play, it, it steps City up a level and it makes us tick. And that's what he did. Bernardo Silva for me was outstanding. I thought Rodri was outstanding. And then we get the second goal. You know what I mean? The ball comes across. Alvarez brings it down in the centre, lays it off to Erling. He doesn't even think about it. He on the swivel, smashes it left foot, top corner, in off the crossbar. Bang. 2-0. City ends up. Um, we're 2-0 up at Burnley and it's looking like job well done. Um, again, Erling Haaland, what can you say about the guy? Do you know what I mean? What can you say? He can miss as many sitters as he wants in the charity shield. He can miss as many sitters as he wants in the... Uh, Pre-season games. But when it comes down to the business side, Burnley, Friday night, under the lights, that's when we want Erling Haaland to score. So we're 2-0 up early doors. Um, and you know what? After that, you, you couldn't see Burnley getting back in it because City just... I just thought City had another couple of gears to go if we needed to. Do you know what I mean? It was more about getting the rhythm back in, into the team. Um, we've seen Rico Lewis... Get something thrown at him off the pitch. So some idiot from Burnley's throwing fucking vapes at people. You know what I mean? Can have people's eye out and that. You know what I mean? He, he's uh, apparently he's been banned for life. So you know what I mean? People are stupid. Um, I just thought that we knocked the stuffing out of Burnley's atmosphere early doors. I thought our away end was brilliant. If you look at the contrast from the from Wembley when the lads boycotted it. And um, a lot of people went to the band on the wall to watch it. And a lot of the tickets were bought up by um, non-match going regulars. You could see the atmosphere. You know what I mean? You could see it was massive. You look behind the net at Wembley. Everyone was sat down. Pe people just were enjoying the game. Nobody was interested in getting behind the team. It was like a day out. Uh, Burnley, all the, all the uh, regulars were back, 18 to 25s. I've seen a lot of uh, younger lads. I've seen a lot of the older boys there, a lot of uh, the, the girls and that together. And, and and it was one of the best away ends for a while. I thought it was brilliant. I thought the City end was up, singing all the way through. Do you know what I mean? Let's talk about Rodri. Let's talk about Rodri. He scored in Istanbul. Ba, 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 ba. All the tunes were bouncing out, you know what I mean? And uh, I thought there was a massive difference. And fair fair play to everybody getting behind the lads. I think it, I think it helps massive. I think it's massive. The Wembley one the other week, I don't want to go on about it too much because it, it, this is what happens in football. You know, if, if it, you, people boycott, try and make a stand, I'm, I'm all for it. Do you know what I mean? If that's what they want to do, fine. But I just thought that, you know, you're opening the door to the ticket system to be abused. There was a lot of Arsenal fans, yeah, in the Manchester City end at Wembley. Now, I don't know how that happened. I don't know why it happened but we was on the pitch and after the game when all the City fans had gone there was a lot in there and it, it's not on and it's dangerous there's fam families in there and things like that and, and we need to keep an eye on it as City fans we need to make sure we're all transparent and the ticket office and the club and we all work together make sure nothing daft happens you know what I mean but that's my little say on that but the Burnley fans I thought they tried the best get the team going. I like Turf more. It's a proper compact football ground, old floodlights and that. And it's proper football there. But I thought the City fans were magic. I thought they were magic. Um, second half, pretty much the same. Um, City dominating play, dominating possession. Couple of early chances. Um, nothing much happening. I think the, the third goal killed them off. Obviously, the ball gets whipped in the box. Erling and a few of the boys, Ake, are going for the stooping low for the header. Bounces off to the Burnley defender to Rodri, three or four yards out, and he smashes it into the net. 3-0. And then, you know, it's it's a good three points. I said on a, a Burnley channel the other day that I think some teams will get, get caught out at Turf Moor. I think there's going to be some teams that get stuck there. 
And I'm glad we've got it out of the way early doors because I think going to Turf more late in the season when Burnley's got the feet under the table and they're playing their stuff will be a nightmare. So I'm glad we've been there. We've got the three points and we're happy days. But overall, looking through the City team, Rico Lewis was lively. He got caught a couple of times, early doors on the ball, but I thought he was did well. Rodri is he's just a, he's just a colossus. He's a monster. The way he glides around that pitch is unreal. Winning the ball back, he had a couple of long range efforts. He, he looked like he's enjoying his football, and he got on the score sheet. I thought the back four did okay, or well, the back three, whatever you want to call it. Akanji, Ake, and uh, Kyle Walker. The rumor is Walker signing a new three year deal this week. Um, I'm really happy about that. Definitely need Kyle Walker in the squad. We love his pace. We, lo we love his experience. And we also uh, underestimate what he's like off the pitch. You know, you see some of these um, videos coming out from last season when he wasn't playing, but he was geeing the team up. He was going around the dressing room, having a word with the younger lads. And he, he that that is invaluable experience, especially when you lose someone like Ilkay Gundogan in the team who, who brought you that. You don't want to be losing Kyle. You know what I mean? Ruben Diaz wasn't there. Um, John Stones wasn't there so people like Kyle Walker they step up to the plate and, and, and it's games like this where you know we played really really well um, speaking of Kyle you know there was a nasty challenge on him late on in the in the, uh, in the the game um, Zarori I think it was Kyle Walker broke away from him he's lunged at him and he's, he studs right down the back of his leg um, straight red referee went over to VAR red card uh, silly challenge, really. You know what I mean? You're miles off it. You're not even attempting the ball. You've gone down the back. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, late night. Let me have a bit of me brew. You've gone down the back of him there. You know what I mean? You're not even coming across him to chop him. You've gone down the back of him. It's a straight red. So, overall, Blues, it was a decent day at the office. Manchester City 3, Burnley nil. We kept a clean sheet. We started the Premier League season um, as we as we meant to. You know what I mean? We're the champions. We've got three points on the board. Uh, we've got a big game this week in the Super Cup, which um, I'm flying out to Athens on Tuesday morning, going up to London on Monday night. Um, quick one, Tuesday, Wednesday, out Thursday. Looking forward to it. We've never been to a Super Cup before. Um, just looking forward to a good game of football you know what I mean another trophy in the bank um, yeah I can't wait for it but overall match day one Burnley away really really good really really happy with it um, not heard anything on Ruben Diaz other than he was concussed in training it was a bad one uh, he may miss the Super Cup because I don't know if Pep will risk him knowing Ruben Diaz he's probably going to want to play in that so don't be surprised if he plays Kyle, uh, John Stones apparently is a lot better. Um, I think he might be in the squad. And then we're going on to Newcastle on Saturday. And just a little word on Newcastle. Um, last week, um, a very good friend of mine, Wilke, Jack Wilkinson, 24-year-old, Man City fan, home and away, biggest blue you'll ever meet in your life. He passed away and we had to bury him. Uh, hundreds of City fans in Lee, always City shirts on, in the church. Um we had to carry his coffin in and um, we had to bury him at 24 years old. It was one of the saddest days of my life. I know Wilke, a lad who loved Manchester City Football Club and he loved football in general. And, you know, it was a very, very sad story in a very, very tragic way um, for him to go. So what we're trying to do is on 24 minutes this Saturday against Newcastle, we're going to try and do a minute's applause for Wilke. I'm really, really trying to get his image on the on the scoreboard. But if you could pass it on, if you look on my Instagram, I'm going to put a picture of Wilke up, and I'm going to I'm going to hope for the Blues to share it. Um, then hopefully we can get that done for him because he deserves it. You know, all last season, the away games. You know what I mean? Leipzig, Bayern Munich, Madrid, all that. The the boys were there. You'll know him. When you see the picture of Wilkie, you'll know him. All City fans, we all know each other. You know what I mean? We might not know each other by name, but we know each other. We see each other all over the world and we always give each other a nod. And, um, you know, him and his friend Jake, I don't know if you remember, I did a Leipzig um, review and I said it was two lads chewing my ears off all the way to the game. 
well, that was Jake and Wilkie, and now Wilkie's passed away. Um, yeah, it was a sickener, and I'm so sad, you know what I mean? His mum, his dad, all blues. I spoke to his dad, who's, you know, having a tough time of it. Very brave guy. Um, so emotional to see him there at weekend, and um, yeah. If we can do that, Blues, if we can if we can get that going, um, that'd be really good respect for Wilkie. And um, God bless him. And all the young people out there, if you're suffering with anything, whatever it is, you know what I mean? Mental health, drugs, you know, substance abuse, anything, alcohol. If you're struggling, man, get the help. Speak to somebody. There's a big gang of, of, of lads there at that funeral, all his mates. And a lot of them didn't know what was going on or what was happening. And, um, you know, we need to talk to each other. We need to we need to speak to each other. We need to make sure we check on our mates. We don't want this happening. I never want to go through that again in my life. And um, I'm sorry it's a bit of a sad ending to, a, to the thing, but I'm just trying to get it out there. If there's anyone watching this and you're struggling, you know, my DMs on Instagram is always open. I'm not qualified. I'm not. I can always try and advise you the best I can. But I always say to people, talk about it. Go and see someone. If you're not feeling right and you're not being soft, you're not, you just need to go and speak to someone and get it out there. You know, the world is a tough place as it is and life's hard enough as it is and we don't want to be losing people at 24 year old. That's all I'm going to say. But anyway, Super Cup Wednesday, Newcastle away, Saturday, 24th minute, round of applause for Wilke. That is what we want. Um, Thank you, everybody, that has been giving me support for working for Manchester City. For me, it's a dream. It's an honour. When the club asked me to do it, I'm going to do it. I'm enjoying it. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm saying my two pence worth before the game. I'm saying my reaction after the game. Uh, I feel like a kid in a sweet shop. You know what I mean? But it's all you guys that support me. It's all the City fans that say, we want Big Steve on. We love Big Steve. And I appreciate every single one of you. Been getting a bit of hate. People jealous and talking shit. Oh, you've sold yourself. I've sold me. Apparently, I've sold myself out because I'm working for the club. Well, I'm going to the match anyway. I don't drink alcohol, so I was sat in the pub with a lad drinking coke. I'm sat there waiting for the game to start, like you. So, if the club want Big Steve to go and talk a bit on the microphone, then I'm sorry, the haters. I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? I'm a big kid at heart. I love this football club, and I'm doing it. So, I'm living the dream. But I thank everyone who supported me and got me there. All them that voted for me on the overlap, you all sent the uh, the votes in and I won the vote and I appreciate it. I'm on the overlap. And I'm here to represent Manchester City fans. Old, young. I mean, I might you might not agree with everything I say. I don't agree with everything other people say. But I promise you I'll always be real and I will always say how I feel. So there's no fakeness from me. I'm never going to say anything for likes or video. I'm not interested in any of that. All I'm doing is representing... The club. I go home and away, week in, week out. And whether I was working for Man City or not, you know, Manchester City don't pay for my tickets. Manchester City don't pay for my travel. You know, I do, if I do work for Manchester City, I get I get my payment for my time. That is it. I don't want anything for free. I don't want nothing off the club. I support the club. I buy all my own shirts. So before that one comes out, there might be people that take off the club. Fair play. But I don't. I buy everything myself. Yesterday, I was in the souvenir shop buying the away kits for the kids. So, you know, I'm on a journey again this season with the fans. We're going to go and try and win everything again. I'm doing a little bit for Manchester City, which I'm absolutely loving and I can't wait. And I just wanted to thank everybody. 20,000 subscribers on YouTube. Brilliant. 45,000 on Instagram. Unbelievable. 25,000 on TikTok. Smashing it. And listen, I appreciate it. So, Blues, this is my match day one preview. Do you know what I mean? We've had a bit of highs. We've had a few lows near the end. We will care. We've had a bit of a moan off me near the end. But listen, it is what it is. The season is back. We're all happy. Please hit a like. Please subscribe. Please don't forget, Will care, 24th minute, Newcastle. Let's give him a clap. And um, stay tuned for the Super Cup preview. Come on, sir.